All right, this match is set to kick off between Brian Dietzenbach and Jimmy Coleman as the players lag. It's looking like... I'm not sure who won that lag. Brian took the balls off too quick, but... Seems like Brian picked the game and is going to pick a ball. Jimmy gets the break. And we're ready to fire off on our five o'clock round. As you may have heard over the PA, all the five o'clock rounds have been called. And we're moving right along. So again, this is Nick Briggs. Wayne is in his match, so I'll be covering and commentating. I'm pretty active in the chat, so if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, I will be happy to answer them. So Jimmy pockets the nines, looks like he's playing with the stripes here. All right, sorry, getting the stream links posted out there. Jimmy looks to be on a good run here. Try to get position on this 15 ball. Doesn't seem to have a, the greatest of shape on this. So maybe he's going to try cutting this down the table. It looked like he tried just punching in that side pocket. So Brian comes to the table with the six and seven ball, a little bit of trouble. I think he's going to elect to try to break this out now with this four ball. Oh, he missed the four, but the six is going to fall. Regardless, he left 
Jimmy not happy. Whether Brian slapped that ball in or not, that's what they're talking about right now. If Jimmy would have had to try to kick up his ball or Brian keeps shooting. Personally, myself, if I was Jimmy, I wanted to come back to that table because Brian could very well run these racks. So Brian slow rolls that ball in the corner. Gives himself shape on that one ball. There's draw back cross for that two. Just like that, you can play a stop shot on the two. If he comes out enough for it. He might be a little off angle here. Yeah, I don't think he likes the angle he's on. This is where you kind of just stun this ball. He might want to slide this ball across the table. It's not on much of an angle. You can see that it's pretty straight, but it's a slight angle. And any anything he puts on that ball, it's going to pull him past that ball. Nope, just draw it over towards the side. Give yourself a shot on it. You didn't want to go into those balls there. And just a slow roll. Bring your cue ball back towards the side pocket. Play it back in the same pocket. Brian pockets the eight and puts himself up one nothing over Jimmy Coleman. So Brian with the break, pockets two off the break, with ball still moving. So he does have an open table, he did pocket a high and a low ball. Jerry, I'm not 100% sure, I think Brian Played one round before this. I think this is second round of Winterside. I'm not 100% sure. I So Jerry, the bracket is posted behind me. I just walked back there and looked at it for you. Um, this is the second round of the A side. I'm not sure what happened with Brian's first match or who he played, but he did win to be here. Whether or not it was a forfeit or not, I'm not 100% sure if he actually played. Not a problem, buddy. So Brian just giving courtesy and allowing the table next to him to shoot. That is what the delay was about. Just going to slow roll this four in there. Give himself a shot on the six. Come back out for that one.
You want to be back out center table for this one so you can play the eight in the corner. Just like that. Great shot, Brian. Makes it look easy on this run out. I'd imagine he's fairly straight on this eight. And Brian pockets the eight, goes up 2 nothing over Jimmy. So Brian to break here. Fifteen falls on the corner. Giving him high balls. I'm curious if that thirteen ball actually goes inside or not. I believe it will. From the angle he's at. That might be the main problem ball to get out of here. I believe his 12 does down play down the table. The only issue would be is getting that 11 ball. Maybe he thinks about cheating this off of this six ball. He's eyeing it up right now looking at the 11. It doesn't go anywhere really. You need to make a hole for this. Oh, I think it might slide past that five. I couldn't see that from this angle, but switching the break, I think it does go. These pockets are big. So Brian's having a little bit of trouble here trying to reach this ball. He knows what he wants to do, just he couldn't get the angle he needed on it. He just couldn't get comfortable with that shot. He was thinking long and hard about that. I'm curious if a bridge would have held him there. Jimmy's thinking over about how he wants to run this table. He knows he doesn't want to leave 
Brian a shot if he does happen to get back to the table. And he misses the four ball, giving Brian a three ball out here. So if you're Brian here, you want to bring this ball back either between the two and the four or back towards the side pocket, center table. He goes with the first option between the two and the four. Bring yourself around to either try to play it in the side or just shoot it past that one ball into the corner pocket. Again, either between the two and four, or spin it past it. With low right, spin it around the table. A little high on this ball. He wanted to be lower. So he calls it in the top left corner from this angle. And he just fires it in. Brian's going to jump ahead. 3 nothing. Meaning going in the nine ball, he's at least going to have a one game advantage. break again. He's got a pretty solid break. Oh, that cue ball went flying. So Jimmy comes to the table with ball in hand in the kitchen. We are playing APA rules here. If you scratch on the break, it is behind the line. So it looks like he's going to elect to play low balls here. So it makes it two on the side. Came out a little bit higher than he wanted to be on this. And he wanted to be a little more straight so he could roll that cue ball to get to the one. Oh, now he just tried doing a little too much to get on the one. Luckily enough for him, Brian's got a ball up on the end with the eight ball. Keeping his options to run out this rack a little less. He's got to get a shape on that ball. Brian really thinking over how he gets to this ball. It's not in a pretty spot by any means. So it looks to me like Brian's going to be playing safe. Maybe they're questioning uh, what hit a rail or not. Um, he was playing safe to get ball in hand to try to get this ball out of the top. So I'm not sure that 
he got there. I think that three ball might be visible. Oh, we can see even more. So Jimmy just plays safe on the five ball. Just touching the ball, making a good hit. So Brian comes back to the table still with that ball in a troublesome spot. I think we're just going to see a bunch of safes here just to push balls around the table until Brian feels comfortable enough to shoot at that ball. Or maybe he's hoping Jimmy breaks it out for him. Oh, Brian might get a shot here. That's why you play the safes, ladies and gentlemen. Not necessarily for ball in hand every time, but if you have a trouble ball, let your opponent keep hitting balls, and if they get your ball out of the way for you by missing a shot like that, you might have an opportunity to get yourself out of this rack. Now the eight ball still doesn't go anywhere, but now Brian has options. So Brian gets that trouble ball out of the way, leaving the eight ball stuck in that corner by itself. So again, Brian's stuck thinking how he's going to get out of this rack. That eight ball's no, no gimme. It's not fun. It's in a bad spot. Only way I see this ball going anywhere. It's going to take some effort. Especially in the position that it's in right now. So now it looks like Brian's trying to get balls down here. I think he was trying to put it more down towards that seven ball so he could use that 14 to break the eight out. I think he got it on the wrong side. So I'm not sure if Jimmy was trying to make that ball or not. I think this is just going to be a safe battle for a little bit until that eight ball comes out. Nobody wants to go anywhere near it right now. And if you're Jimmy, you don't want to move those balls because Brian can run out at any second. That's why Brian just keeps touching things. No point in making the ball if you can't get out. So Jimmy pockets a ball for Brian unintentionally. So Brian moves the eight ball into a not much of a better spot, but now it does bank. If you're Jimmy here, you gotta really hunker down, keep playing safe. You control that eight ball right now, so Leaving that seven ball there, yes, it's important, but you also need that eight ball out of the way to make the seven. So you gotta pick and choose how you wanna break this out. Looks like he's just gonna put another ball up there. Looks like it got in the path of the eight ball bank. 
that's a good shot. That one ball got in a great spot. So again, playing safe. Doing what you gotta do to prolong this rack until you have the opportunity to run. This is a tough table for Jimmy. I mean, you have to play defensive to, to hide that eight ball from Brian. But Brian's not going to make his balls till that eight ball comes out. So he's going to keep leaving you safe until he has an opportunity to run. And that eight ball just squeaked out enough. Whether or not Brian can see a ball and make it here, he's blocking the camera. Looks like he's just going to play safe again. Try to lock him behind that third team. He got him there, too. It's a good shot by Brian. He may be able to see that one. Oh. He's got him edged. That was a good try. Oh, it's going to nudge the eight ball out even more. So now, Brian's played this safe game for who knows how many shots to give himself the opportunity to run. He was just waiting for that hole to open up. Sometimes it's just about the game of patience. Now, Brian just hit the six ball with his hand as he went down the bridge. That's why you play safe games. That is the main reason. Whether you can make the ball or not, sometimes you don't need to. Because Brian leaving those three balls on the table just went on that wreck. Brian jumps out to a very early 4-0 lead over Jimmy Coleman. This is the last rack of 8-ball, and then we will move on to 9-ball, in which they have 8 racks to play. Apologize about that, folks. They were over the PA, and I didn't want to uh, deafen anybody. So Jimmy's got some work to do. He's got himself in a 4 nothing hole. Not out of it yet. It looks like he tied that five ball up there with the six. Not what he wanted to do. He's going to play the 3 7 combo here. Yeah. 
Jimmy's on a nice little run here. We'll just follow this ball up to that first diamond up there. So you can play the sixth in the opposite corner. Got himself a little off angle here. There's no good safe here either. Brian's got a wide open table. That's a great shot by Jimmy. Fantastic shot. So it looks like Jimmy Coleman's on a little bit of a roll here. It's a little off angle on this five ball yet again. But the way he fired in that six ball, I'd shoot this the same exact way. Same confidence. Just put it in the hole. All I'd be telling myself right now is just make the ball. How's it going, Melissa? Glad you could be joining us tonight. Great shot. That was fantastic. Got himself perfect on that eight ball in the side pocket. So Jimmy gets himself on the board and makes it four to one the opposite way. Brian leads 4-1 and we are now switching to nine ball. So Jimmy's gonna come in the nine ball with the break. The way he just shot that rack, I think uh, keep that moving in the nine ball, you can break and run a couple racks here. So Jimmy Coleman to the table to break. And a great break he has too, wow. One ball is down, four ball is down. That was a great spread too. Just focus on pocket and this two ball. Don't do too much. Oh, that's unfortunate for Jimmy. It's going to put this three ball right in the pocket for Brian. Thank you for the kind words, Patricia. This is Nick Spriggs, not Wayne Everhart. Wayne is currently shooting a match right now. But for those of you who, that do not know me, I am Nick Spriggs, sponsor pool player for TTMD. Also a representative of Mike Lambros at Lambros Q's, one of Wayne's personal sponsors. Big shout out to everybody coming hanging out. Our West Coast team. Brian's putting on a good show here. Brian's got a pretty solid dead stroke. Seen him shooting a couple tournaments. So Brian's looking to jump out five to one. Right. 
Apologize about that. Had a little bit of a sponsor banner issue. I appreciate it, Patricia. I tried my best. So Brian doesn't give himself the best positioning. Yeah, he wasn't happy with the lead from the beginning. This is where Jimmy can capitalize. Brian's going to concede and give Jimmy this rack. Jimmy needs to take advantage of the frustration that uh, that Brian is dealing with here. The lead has shrunk. Jimmy's here fighting. Thanks for the support from our guys out in San Diego. <laughs> Again, another great break. Drops two balls. Leaves himself a shot on that two ball. I believe it does go. That it does. Another solid break from Jimmy. Great shot there. Gives himself nice, pos nice positioning on that three ball. Not the side he wanted to be on, but he didn't have much of an option here. He's jacking up on this ball, playing low. He might try putting it past the nine and coming back to the center table. I don't know that I would try juicing this ball a little too much. I'd kind of just roll this ball in and take it as I get it. Yeah, so he elects to just put this ball in the pocket, give himself a longer shot on the four. He doesn't have a terrible angle on it, so this is just a slow roll ball. Oh, he punched it. So Brian's back to the table again here with a favorable table. Jimmy did most of the work already. Brian's going to elect to shoot the seven ball of the full table. Not much of the angle that he wanted. Makes it look easy. Brian makes the eight, giving himself position on this nine ball. And he goes up five, two. I will be right back. I need to get myself something to drink.
All right, and I am back. Jimmy looks to be on a good run here. That was a nice shot on the one ball as I came back. Which he pocketed two balls. Draws the entire table. That was a great stroke there. And it looks like he left himself straight in on this ball. Not the angle he wanted to uh, to get back on the six. Yeah, he just tried forcing it to get on that six ball. And it's going to leave Brian the wide open table with the five ball on the side that he needs it on already. Brian makes the five, gets great shape on the six. Just push it into the side rail here. Bring the cue ball back out the center. Gonna give himself a lot more of an angle than he wanted on it. Still a manageable position. Oh my goodness, Brian, he under hit it. He under hit it, put the cue ball behind the nine. Everything went wrong on that shot. Still not, not pretty for Jimmy. He's gonna go full table. Back down for the nine. How's he gonna sit? Hold ball. Puts himself all the way back down. These tables are moving. Just when you think Jimmy got himself a break with Brian missing that seven in the side, it just gets harder. So it looks like Jimmy was trying to play a safe here and lock it down on the bottom rail, but it bounces out. Great cut by Brian. Hold cue ball. Whew. Just catches the point. So Brian puts himself on the hill first. Going up six to two. So Brian to the break on the hill. The only place you want to be when you're on the hill is breaking. And he breaks dry. I'm shocked that four ball just fell. Sorry, I had a person come up and talk to me. Um, 
these pockets are very forgiving to So he's going to give himself the angle to potentially get out of this rack. He goes to the bottom rail. Doesn't come back to where he wanted it. So Jimmy's trying to stay alive. He a great shot on the six ball. The Q traveled a little further than he wanted it to. A nice cut. Brings himself out for the eight. Just put a nice smooth stroke on this ball, make the eight, go into that bottom rail and come back out to center table. Goes two rails, comes back out center table, and it looks like he's going to go 6-3 against Brian. So Jimmy brings it in closer and is now behind 6-3. So for those of you just joining us, this is Nick Spriggs, sponsored TTMD pool player. Also a player representative for Lambros Cues. Wayne Everhart, the man behind everything, is currently in a match. So I am covering the stream duties. We are at the U.S. preliminary, or excuse me, the U.S. amateurs preliminaries in Fairfax, Virginia. At Revolution Stars and Billiards. Playing on nine foot Brunswick's with brand new cloth and they are playing like ice. I played my first match today at 11 a.m. and lost on a TV table. And then I've been sitting and waiting for my next round, which will be coming up in the next two and a half hours or so. Eight o'clock is when I am scheduled to play. But until then, I am here commentating while Wayne is in his match. Brian breaks up the jump cue almost halfway across the table. He's gonna try jumping at this one ball. And he does jump it, makes contact. The one ball's still rolling. It looks like it's gonna go in the corner and it does. Not the way you want it, but you'll take it. So Brian left himself a shot on this two ball after the jump. And he rattles it. Two ball's gonna lock up on this cue though. Oh, if you're Jimmy, that's heartbreaking. Brian's not one that misses a whole lot, but when he does, you hope to get back to the table and have a good shot. It's a little demoralizing when Brian does miss and you come back to the table with that one. So it looks like Jimmy may try playing safe here. And he got a good one. That's a great shot. Looks like Brian's going to come back to the table with his jump cue, maybe.
I saw him reach for it as he went to the table. I guess he put it back down. Great kick by Brian. He's going to get this cue ball to jump back down here with his nine. So Jimmy to the table, still fighting, still alive. Much like I was earlier, stuck in the 6-3 hole. Jimmy with a good stroke, just enough speed to pocket that two ball. He did hit rail first and it did manage to fall. As I've been mentioning, these pockets are very forgiving. Larger pockets than a lot of us are used to. Great cut by Jimmy to cut that four on the side. He's going to leave himself either straight in on this five or a cut on the five on the side. You just don't want to do too much. A couple of these shots he's rattled. Oh, is he going to hide himself? I think he came out enough for it. So you just want to roll this ball in, bring the cue center table again. Issue here for Jimmy is he makes this seven. He's going to have to play the eight to get on the nine. Nine ball sitting on the bottom rail. Nice shot. This is a natural angle now. Great shot. Beautiful cue ball positioning in there. So Jimmy's still much alive here, fighting to bring himself back into it. Cost the deficit to two. Brian needs one and is on the hill, and Jimmy needs three. So Brian at the table. Stretches for the two ball here. Looks like he's gonna try drawing out to get down to the three. Push the seven ball over. I'm curious what the call is here. What happened? Oh, I watched it back on the replay. So Brian left his stick there and was watching the seven ball and did not see the cue rolling towards the stick and hit his stick, giving Jimmy ball in hand. And this is where you take advantage. It was a simple mistake by Brian. Didn't realize it. So Jimmy is left with the decision to 
how to get to the six ball where he wants to play it. Maybe draw into the seven. Yep, just like that. He's not making life much easier on himself here. Great shot. Oh, he got on that seven too and just rattled the six. Little scoring update from uh, Wayne Everhart's match. I was just notified that he is now into nine ball and is down three to two against Al Cannington. He's playing a couple tables over. I can see him in the middle of the room. Great shot by Brian there. The six ball rattled and almost didn't fall. So to me, it looked like Brian was just playing safe. He did well by putting the cue on the eight. Leaving him stuck over top of it. On a full, almost six foot shot. If you think about it. And it's going to leave Brian straight in on the seven ball. It looks like he's going to be arced over the eight as well. So Brian, not arced over the eight. Banks the seven ball straight back accidentally as he waves to Jimmy, apologizing for slopping the ball in. But doesn't leave himself very favorable in this eight either. Oh, it looked like he was just trying to cut it and did not make contact. Giving Jimmy ball in hand on the eight and nine ball. Jimmy can pull within one here. And it's not a position that you want to be in if you're Brian. Jimmy's here to play. And it's knocking on the doorstep of Brian. He just pulled within one game. Brian is on the hill. Jimmy needs two. <laughs> Brian, these are nine-foot Brunswicks with Simonis 860 on them. They are playing like you're walking on ice. The, the cue ball is flying. I've had a couple shots today on this exact table I played earlier. Um, I tried playing a couple saves, and the cue ball just kept rolling. I hit it, hit it good. The balls rolled where they needed to be and then just kept going. So Jimmy has a monster break again. Dude's got a one heck of a break. He pockets two every time. And he misses the one ball off the break, giving Brian this table. <laughs> Melissa, I'm not 100% sure what their skill levels are, as this is just an open amateur event. I'm sure they are APA rated. Um, but this does not go off of ratings. It is just a single race to seven. I'd imagine that Brian is a 7-9 because I've known him for a little bit. He shoots pretty good pool. Very, very strong. If I'm a 7-9, I'd imagine he'd be a 7-9 as he's just putting on a show running rags. Thank you, Will, for the update. 
Jimmy is also a seven. And it's looking like Brian's going to try to put this one away here. Doesn't put himself where he wants to be on this eight. He's got to think about this one for a second. So Brian doing the best he can shooting off the rail there. Just gets the cue ball back to the center table the best he can. Give himself an angle to cut this ball in this bottom left corner. That was a great shot to win the set. Great shooting, Brian and Jimmy. Jimmy fought hard and almost came back and won this match. So that's the end of this match. We're going to sit around and wait for this next round. And we'll be right back.